Is eternal life a myth, a spiritual promise, or a reality waiting for us? Throughout human history, the concept of eternal life has captivated the minds and souls of people across the globe. It's a theme that transcends mere cultural boundaries, weaving its way through the tapestry of numerous religions and philosophies. From the ancient Egyptian belief in an afterlife journey through the Duat, to the Hindu concept of moksha, where the soul is liberated from the cycle of death and rebirth, eternal life represents a profound human longing for an existence beyond the temporal limits of earthly life. So why is this concept so universally significant? It speaks to a core aspect of human nature, the quest for meaning, the fear of oblivion, and the hope for something greater beyond the veil of death. This quest for eternal life is not just about surviving forever, but about understanding the very essence of being and the ultimate purpose of existence. Now let's delve into what Jesus himself had to say about eternal life. Consider the parable of the sower, a story told by Jesus as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. In this vivid parable, a sower goes out to sow seeds. As he scatters them across the land, the seeds fall on four different types of ground. The first type is the path, where the seeds are quickly snatched up by birds. The second is rocky ground, where the seeds sprout rapidly, but lacking deep roots, they soon wither under the sun. The third type is among thorns, which grow up and choke the young plants. Finally, the fourth type is good soil, where the seeds take root deeply, grow strong, and produce a bountiful harvest. Through this simple yet profound story, Jesus illustrates the varied ways individuals receive the Word of God. Each type of soil represents a different response to spiritual truths. The path, the rocks, and the thorns depict those who, for various reasons, fail to embrace and nurture the Word. So, the seed that flourishes represents those who hear the Word and understand it, thus securing their path towards eternal life. Jesus often spoke of faith as a key to eternal life. But what kind of faith was he talking about? Imagine a faith so profound that it transcends cultural and religious boundaries, a faith that impresses even Jesus Christ himself. This is the story of the centurion in Matthew chapter eight. A Roman officer, an outsider in Jewish society, approaches Jesus with a request to heal his gravely ill servant. Without hesitation, he expresses his belief in Jesus's power to heal simply through the spoken word. What is so striking about the centurion, you might ask? It's his unwavering confidence in Jesus's authority. He compares it to his own command over soldiers, acknowledging that Jesus need only say the word and his servant would be healed. This declaration astounds Jesus, prompting him to exclaim, truly, I tell you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. This encounter beautifully illustrates that true faith isn't about public displays or loud prayers. It's a deep, quiet trust that recognizes and respects divine authority. Indeed, a faith so strong that even Jesus marvels leads to miraculous outcomes. Money and possessions, how do they tie into the pursuit of eternal life? In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 19, we encounter a rich young man who approaches Jesus with a burning question, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Jesus responds not by listing deeds, but by pointing to the commandments, emphasizing the need to follow them to attain life. The young man claims he has adhered to all these laws since his youth, yet he feels something is missing and asks, what do I still lack? Jesus, recognizing the young man's sincere desire, but also his greatest hindrance, advises him to go, sell all his possessions, give the money to the poor, and then follow him. This invitation to abandon material wealth for spiritual wealth highlights a profound lesson. True riches are found not in earthly wealth, but in heavenly treasures. The young man, however, walks away sorrowful, for his wealth is great. This story isn't just about the sacrifice of possessions, but the readiness to put spiritual pursuits above material security. Eternal life then demands not just faith, but also sacrifice. Love, an emotion, a commandment, and a path to eternal life. In the teachings of Jesus, the commandment to love one's neighbor as oneself is not just a moral guideline, but a profound spiritual principle. It intertwines deeply with the quest for eternal life, a theme vividly illustrated in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Here a traveler is left beaten on the road. 
While others pass by, it is a Samaritan, an unlikely hero who stops to help. This Samaritan doesn't see a stranger in need. He sees a neighbor, a fellow human being. His actions embody the essence of loving one's neighbor, a direct, compassionate response to suffering, regardless of race or creed. Jesus uses this story to redefine the concept of neighbor. It's not just about proximity, it's about solidarity in humanity. This act of love transcends conventional boundaries and is pivotal in aligning one's life towards the divine. Through love, we not only fulfill the law, but also edge closer to eternal life, resurrection. Jesus not only spoke about it, he demonstrated it. He rose from the dead, conquering death itself, and in doing so, he offered a glimpse of the eternal life promised to all who believe in him. This monumental event isn't just a cornerstone of faith, it's a beacon of hope for humanity. In the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 25 to 26, Jesus declares, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Here, Christ is not merely discussing physical demise, but is inviting us into a deeper, more profound understanding of life that transcends the mortal coil. This promise of resurrection is not just about the assurance of an afterlife, but about a present and continuous transformation. It's about living a life in fullness, with the confidence of being part of something eternal, something that death cannot touch. Believe in me and live forever. Jesus' promise of the resurrection offers a direct path to eternal life. How can we apply Jesus' teachings on eternal life in today's world? In a world that often values material success and immediate gratification, the timeless teachings of Jesus on eternal life beckon us to a different path. To live out these teachings today, we start by embracing faith. Faith isn't just about belief. It's about action. It's choosing hope over despair, even when challenges loom large. Sacrifice is another cornerstone. It doesn't necessarily mean giving up worldly possessions, but rather prioritizing others' needs and well-being over our own desires. This could be as simple as dedicating time to help others or making conscious choices that benefit the wider community. Jesus' command to love our neighbors as ourselves invites us to break down barriers of indifference. It calls us to build bridges of compassion and understanding across diverse communities. And finally, embrace hope. In the face of adversity, hope guides us to persevere, inspired by the promise of redemption and renewal. Living these teachings is not just about securing a place in eternity. It's about transforming our lives today. We've journeyed through various teachings of Jesus on how to attain eternal life. As we've seen, these teachings are not just ancient texts. They are alive, pulsing with relevance for every soul's journey towards transcendence. Firstly, faith stands as the cornerstone. Like the seeds in the parable of the sower, our faith must find fertile soil, taking root deeply within us, resilient against life's tempests. Then there's sacrifice. Remember the tale of the rich young man? True spiritual wealth requires us to let go of earthly attachments. It's not merely about giving up material possessions, but also about surrendering the ego, the hardest possession to release. Love too plays a pivotal role. Love thy neighbor as thyself, a commandment that binds the fabric of community and personal integrity. It challenges us to see others with compassion and empathy, breaking down barriers that divide. And finally, the promise of resurrection. This is not just about life after death. It's about the renewal of life here and now, constantly evolving, dying to the old and being reborn in spirit. Eternal life is not just an end goal. It's a transformative journey shaped by the profound teachings of Jesus. Embrace this path and watch your spirit soar beyond the confines of earthly existence.